Hello folks, this is Colonel Lee and you have tuned in to Life with Colonel Lee. As you can tell, we are going backpacking. Today it is Tuesday, February the 6th. It's about a little after 1 p.m. All is cloudy. We are due for a winter weather advisory starting at three o'clock this afternoon and all the way well all the way through tonight and early tomorrow morning so <clears throat> they're calling for 10 to 15 mile an hour winds temperatures low 20s with the wind chill is going to feel like in the teens and we're supposed to have freezing drizzle and rain so we'll make for some slippery conditions on the roads but where we're going, we don't need roads. in roughly about nine miles on the Tadra trailhead in LBJ National Grasslands. We're about 10 miles north of Decatur, Texas. Today we have the Alps Mountaineering backpack. It is a 70 liter backpack. We have our Jack Wolf skin two-person backpacking tent and we have some other goodies in there. Once we get to our campsite and set up, I'll show you uh, what we're gonna be spending the night in. So the yellow bag on the back is a backpacker's chair. So, I don't know. I'm 44 years old. I like to have a little bit of extra comfort, I guess. May not need it. There's probably plenty of logs, stumps, rocks, who knows, but I brought it just in case <clears throat> and I'll probably go ahead and use it we do have our little hatchet there is not a burn band out here right now so with the approval that is of headquarters LBJ National Grassland I am permitted to have a campfire just uh, quote use common sense well I do have a pocket full of change. No, I'm just kidding. So my pack is roughly, well, it's lighter than it should be by about four bottles of water. <laughs> Don't forget our water. That would not be good. When we had the pack at home, I'm about 32 pounds. So with the added water, you know, we're probably going to be around 35, 36 pounds. All right. We are ready to get on the trail here. So we're going to take the 9.2. If we go all nine miles, I don't know. Go we'll find our trail.
So for this adventure, uh, I got a pair of uh, gloves. Not real thick. Be uh, sufficient enough for what we're gonna be doing, the weather we're in. And I'm wearing my, turn this around here. Mountain hardware puffer jacket. And underneath I have a long sleeve hikers wool cotton blend shirt and a stay dry t-shirt over that. We're wearing mossy oak, waterproof, windproof, insulated pants. So we're plenty warm. We have a sock hat, toboggan, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I do have a full face mask. Uh, that I can put on if it gets too cold. And another headband, kind of ear band type of deal there. <clears throat> and for my shoes, we have seen some uh, New Balance. They are waterproof hiking boots uh, with Prima Loft, so insulated. Uh, the temperatures are dropping. Temperatures are starting to drop. Uh, had a few sprinkles already. The main reason I chose my Alps Mountaineering backpack is because it has a little rain fly for it. So if it, does, if it starts to come down pretty good, I can take it out cover my backpack so all my gear stays dry all right so I think I found our trail so all the trails start here all right there's a red ribbon there do have a little bit of cell service out here uh, when I camp at Black Creek, it's kind of an intermittent cell service. Uh, one minute I might have service for a minute or two, and then go 30 minutes without service. So I don't know what we would have out here. So far, I have a little bit of service. So this is a nice trail path starting off already. Uh, a lot of horse tracks. So no motor vehicles. Uh, you are allowed to ride your horses, uh, mountain bikes, and of course hiking. So it looks like the trail is marked pretty well so far. So the plan is to hike about an hour or two. We might get to the end of this red trail, 9.2 mile trail. Uh, before the main rain hits, we'll get our camp set up, get our tent set up, everything inside set up before we do anything else next after that we will gather up some firewood and hopefully have us a nice campfire tonight so there's a trail going that way we're gonna follow the red trail so we're gonna go this way So any of you who are watching and hasn't really been to Texas or is unfamiliar with Texas, 
we have some crazy weather here, if you hadn't already heard. Where I grew up in Rollo, Texas, I've seen uh, thunderstorms, uh, tornado warnings early in the morning, and that night we had a blizzard all in 24 hours. Crazy weather. <clears throat> All right, I see. Okay. So as I was saying before, this is a very nice trail. Very soft. So, I'm looking at the sky here. I don't know if the camera will do it justice or not, but it's getting very dark over there. The skies are getting dark. The uh, temperature is dropping. You can kind of smell and feel the moisture in the air. Do a little washout. Little washout point there. So, so far I'm the only one out here. And I didn't see anybody at either of the lakes, any of the campsites coming in. Basically, when I talked to the uh, headquarters of the park I said well you'll probably be the only one out there <laughs> which is kind of what I figured uh, I mean it's a Tuesday most people have to work uh, of course I own I own my own small business so I kind of work when I want to, play when I want to. So most of the time I'm working on the weekends, setting up my kettle corn business, different places. So the rest of this month, we're gonna be at the stockyards in Fort Worth, Fridays and Saturdays. If the weather permits. See the little red ribbon. So we're still on the red trail. And I see a tree up there with a red on it. So that's good, that's good. That's what we wanna see. This is a dried up runoff creek bed. So if we get some heavy rains, this will be underwater. Okay. Well, I'll bring you back later if anything interesting happens. But for now, I'm gonna put this camera up and get to hiking here. So I see this little green archway over here. I hike over, see what that is. does have a red, so that's our trail. <clears throat> kind of stopped sprinkling at the moment, so we're gonna continue on here. Oh, isn't that a nice sound? Kind of like nails on a chalkboard. All right. 
Okay. Continue on down here. So here's kind of a, uh, somebody's made a camping spot here. Picking out a camp spot, you don't want to be <clears throat> right in the midst of all the trees, uh, especially if a storm is coming, the winds and everything. Especially in the winter time, you can't tell which trees are dead or alive. So dead ones, high winds, big. I'm not saying that's one that that fell, but. That just looks like cleanup debris. But you can get something as big as that, snap off the top of a tree, and come down and squash you in your tent. Or bump you on the noggin pretty good. So trees do offer a lot of protection, but you gotta watch out for those widow makers. You hear the wind. Wind is picking up. Uh, when I left the truck, it was about 34, 35 degrees. I'd say it's about 30 degrees now. See what? This is a nice trail. I like the natural part of it, which I'm on right now. It's more hard packed. There's areas where it's not. It's like they dumped a bunch of sand, which is probably great for horses. But man, it is a lot of work for us humans. Spending a lot of extra energy trying to power through that sand. It was about three or four inches. It's not just all sand, it's kind of mixed with uh, cleachy. <clears throat> so if it does rain pretty good, guess what? We have to hike back in. A big old yucky mess. It'll be like trying to walk through oatmeal. If you can hear that sound, that is rain starting to sprinkle down pretty good. You can see the ground there. So I may have to get my rain gear out, make sure our equipment doesn't get wet. So I'm gonna do that right now. Okay. So we've got our rain, a little poncho for the bag. So we get that a little bit better here. That should keep it fairly dry. I say turkey vulture because it has the little white tips on the ends. And there's a lot of turkey vultures out here. So you can see the red blaze, and they have horseshoes painted red. The trail is, I mean, very nicely marked. You would have to uh, really be trying to get lost out here. I mean, well, you just stick to the trail, and they got red markers every 20, 40 yards, so. There's kind of a clearing in there. You might be thinking that'd be a good place to camp, set up your tent, clear out some of that brush down there. But look up here, all that. We don't know what that's gonna do when the winds get up to 15 miles an hour, potentially 20 miles an hour. That guy right there breaks off, comes down your tent, that's not gonna feel good. So. <clears throat> We're gonna camp in this area, this area right here, this little open area. We can stomp down on that tall grass and we can set up our tent there. We have a good wind block all the way around with trees and we don't have any danger of flooding. Like I said, it's not, gonna, it's not supposed to rain that much. 
And there's de definitely plenty of firewood laying around. I saw the wood laying down. So if we don't see what we like here in the next 30 minutes to an hour, I think we might come back to this spot here. It's just now around 2.20. I think we've gone roughly two, two miles, maybe a little over two miles, not far. We're gonna follow this trail. Should head up into that next set of trees over there. And I think we may uh, try to find us a spot over there to camp. It's kind of early in the day. <clears throat> we'll just be sitting around camp. If it's raining, we'll be in the tent. But I did download a movie on my phone, so we'll have a little bit of entertainment. But it's good to be outdoors. Nice to be outdoors. A lot of people don't like to do this when it's cold and rainy, but look at it from my point of view. You uh, acquire the gear, <coughs> necessary gear to keep you warm and dry, no matter what the weather throws at you. I don't know, there's just something about being able to come out in the elements on your own without other people everywhere. So if you come out in the summertime or when the weather is nice, you know, you're going to be doing this with hundreds of other people. Some people may like that. But to me, it's, uh, I don't know, I like to get out here on my own and I don't mind having a small group of people you know on these adventures with me I don't mind that at all but there is something about being out here by yourself facing the elements just you and your gear nature the animals of a frontier feeling, you know. Kind of makes you feel alive. It's good to get away from the rat race. <clears throat> a lot of people escape reality, the rat race, different ways. Some people go gambling, some people go to the beach. I'm not a big gambler, but I like to go to the casinos over there in Oklahoma every once in a while. I think we're having a party on my arm here. Uh, 10,000 steps. Woohoo, we're having a party on my army. Let's see. <clears throat> Yeah, I like to go gambling every once in a while. Never been to Las Vegas. Don't know if I had the desire to ever go. Maybe go just because of the spectacle of it. I definitely like going to the beach. One of the best trips I ever had. My wife, Laura, took me to uh, Maui, Hawaii for a week on my 40th birthday so when we flew out of Dallas it was uh, icy freezing cold and we got to Hawaii it was 74 clear sky it was gorgeous awesome trip first time I've ever been to Hawaii Big old rock there. Banded to a post. Marked in red. 
Okay. <laughs> Lots to do there in Maui. Uh, from what I hear, Maui is less uh, touristy than the main island. So if you go to Maui, you kind of see how the people that do live there live. You know, there's not a whole lot of, I mean, there is some tourist stuff. There's a, there's a lot of condos and things, but it's a little more laid back from what I've heard. <clears throat> so we did see some humpback whales. Uh, we did some kayaking out there. Uh, <clears throat> now one of the best days was we rented one of those uh, Can-Am Spider three-wheel motorcycles. Rented that for the day, and we did the that uh, road goes all the way around the island. We rode that, and we stopped along the way, different places along the way, and did some hiking, to some waterfalls and some caves. Went and seen uh, the black beach, where all the rock and sand is black. Very nice trip. So how I got on that subject was how people escape the rat race. Reality, whatever, whatever you want to call it. The Matrix. <laughs> I like to go on adventures. And I like to do it in extreme weather. Uh, more towards the cold extreme than the hot. This would be a whole different ball game if this was summertime right now in this very spot. You can get up to 100 and 110 degrees. Then with the humidity that we have here, the heat index, can add another 10 to 12 degrees so it can be very very hot you uh definitely have to pack a lot of water with you or hope that some of these creeks and streams have some water in them and use your filter Whole different ball game in summertime. Uh, we're up to another gate. Oh man. It's probably a little more steady there, huh? Probably getting seasick. Like I thought he was hiking, I didn't know he was on the ocean. So here's a little camp spot. Our pit there. And we are right out in the open. That wind is channeling right down through here. Don't want to camp right here. Let's go through here. Let's see what we have. back we want to latch those gates back because you know we don't want cattle getting loose and I know there's cattle in here because I see the cow patties everywhere yeah it drops off pretty dramatically here See our red markers. There's a horseshoe. Somewhere there's a naked horse. Yeah, all his horseshoes and all his spares right here on the trees. 
<laughs> That's the old trail marker. So we are going down. I think we're gonna make a camp right down there. This is like a good place. We're gonna we'll definitely be out of the wind for sure. It'll just go right over the top of us. Still on the trail for the red and the white trail. This is pretty steep here. Kind of loose gravel. Let's see what we got here. A little pass through gate. So that is the white trail, I think. I'm not sure. I think the blue trail runs parallel with us for a ways. I'm not sure. <clears throat> I did see a blue marker about a half mile back to the right of us. So I knew that that trail kind of ran alongside of us for a while. Still on the red and the white trail. I think we're gonna continue on. Just barely sprinkling, not much at all. So I think we're going to just continue on here. So when we were up on top, up there, uh, I was kind of looking, and I was going to mention it, and I forgot. But I was looking for just anything that's going to benefit me uh, while I'm out here by myself. So I was looking for vultures, you know, circling around. And if you see large number of vultures doing like a tornado type of thing, there's uh, something dead there. So... It's either a kill or something just died. But they are scavengers. So <clears throat> if you see something like that in the day of vultures, you're gonna get your scavengers at night. So coyotes will definitely scavenge on something dead. As long as it's, as long as it's not too rancid. They're pretty hardy animals, but so, and I did see a swirling vulture. We've got about 30 of them. <clears throat> They're kind of, kind of off to the right over this way, opposite of where I'm going. So that's good. I don't, I just don't want to camp near something dead. It's going to draw a lot of attention overnight. Anytime you can decrease your chances of running into wildlife, especially coyotes, stuff like that. I mean, the better chances you're not gonna have any incidences. Every once in a while I like to stop and just listen to what's around me. You can hear noises when I'm walking. That's a ibuprofen, naproxen, and a plastic uh, little canister. Makes noises, so any animals out here, they hear me long before I even see or notice them. Like I said, I'm not really worried about it. Just, if I notice that the vultures are telling me there's something dead over there, I'm gonna stay away from it. Eat as simple as that. I like to smell too every once in a while. Getting a different odor here, not a foul odor. More like an evergreen or a cedar. <sighs> Oh, 
Well, let's continue on. <clears throat> Red and white trail. Oh, rain's starting to pick up. You hear it? Let's see if we can hear it. Sounds like leaves in the wind. Rain. Heard that sound. Hear that? I did bring a rain jacket. I will probably get that out here shortly because my jacket is not rainproof. <clears throat> see all these big holes? You can see. The hole there. There's a lot of them in through here. There's another one. <clears throat> Those holes are made by Mexican cedar or Mexican junipers, whichever you want to call it. <clears throat> uh, Mexican junipers, very shallow rooted trees, and they blow over real easily. So we're looking at one right here on the underside. They are not indigenous to this area, although they've been here hundreds of years. They were brought here from the cattle drives over 100 years ago. The cattle drives, Fort Worth was a good place, it's stockyards where we go and do a lot of uh, cattle corning. So anyway, the cows would graze, you know, they're in Mexico and those junipers have berries and they would consume the berries. And as they traveled up north, you know, they, they go poo on the trail and the berries get dropped down in the poo. So a lot of fertilizer and rain gets washed into the soil. And about 20 years later, you get a nice Mexican juniper or cedar. So if you're camping around those types of trees and it's supposed to be windy, don't get too close to them. Stay out of tree length. You know, if that tree's 20 foot tall, get 20 feet away from it with your tent. You don't want to be around it if it gets uprooted. Well, so far it's just wet rain. You know, not dry rain. <laughs> I mean wet rain, I mean like as in not frozen yet. No freezing rain yet. Oh. <clears throat> All right. Oh, it's a soft sand again. Man, that is rough walking in that stuff. Huh. Oh, sprinkling down or well, there's a light rain now. I have a bit of a clearing over here. Let's see what we got. That'd be a good place to set up camp. Who knows? Oh, what do we got here? What do we got? What do we got? dirt road pretty wide clearing up ahead I think we're gonna head up there I gotta put this camera away while it's raining pretty hard okay come to another gate so we have a nice wide area in here to choose from camping spots to set up our tent that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make our camp here. Good wide area. And uh, here's the first animal, a dead armadillo. He's been uh, 
dead for a little while. He still has a little bit of stench, but uh, I don't think anything's really gonna mess with it. Not even vultures are messing with it. pretty good all right let's find a spot for our tent in our camp all right. jack wolf skin chinook 2 nice tent i've camped in this a couple times very nice tent Okay, we have our tent set up. Uh, I'll have to go over the gear later once we get inside. Uh, basically, I'm gonna show you the tent real quick. I gotta let these uh, batteries charge up. Temperature is definitely dropping. It's probably dropped 10 degrees since I've got here at this site. So, inside the tent was a little wet on the floor. But I brought along a little towel uh, just for that reason. So I was able to wipe it up with the towel and everything's good to go. We're nice and dry inside. So we got it guide out. Uh, we're gonna be protected from the wind and the rain. So we are staked out. What I've done on these uh, guide out points to allow more ventilation I've got them uh, staked down close to the tent because I want less ventilation tonight because it's gonna be cold and windy so all the way around the tent I have it anchored down right next to the tent so that way 
the wind does get up, it's not going to flare that open a whole lot. And I'm not going to get a whole lot of breeze coming in there. This is a three season tent, so I can't block out all of the air. See that mesh? The only way to close up that mesh is the rain fly door itself. So any wind that you can keep from coming in is going to be better. I do have a four season tent, but it's a three person. It's big and bulky and really don't need it. So if I do need some ventilation, I got these roof vents and I'll still be protected from the rain. So we're good to go. So we're all set up inside here. So we're gonna let these batteries charge up for a while. And then uh, while that's going on, I'm gonna get a fire pit gathered up, get some firewood gathered up. Uh, maybe we can have a little campfire. Uh, we're not gonna cook with the campfire. We're gonna cook on the backpacking stove. We got a mountain house mill. So campfire is just gonna be because we want one. All right. Okay, we're looking at inside the tent here. Uh, tent does have a gear loft. <clears throat> so we'll do a uh, first look preview on this tent some other time, but I am using the Jack Wolf skin Chinook 2. It is waterproof. So we will be protected from the wind and the rain. All right, let's take a look at what we have here. Okay. So we have our climate, heat static, sleeping pad. <clears throat> Two and a half inches of thickness. So when you're laying down on it, uh, you know, you're not touching the ground. It's very comfortable. This is insulated. It has an R value of five. So it's very insulated. Uh, basically that V shape traps in the heat and radiates back up to you. So very nice sleeping pad. It is, uh, I think 75 inches long. It's 30 inches wide. So it's very comfortable. Now then we have our Teton Trekker, Trekker 5 degree, so it's rated to, you're supposed to be able to survive in this down to 5 degrees of temperature. So we might, the wind chill factor tonight, we might be about 20, maybe 18, so we should be fairly comfortable in here. Uh, and we have a down blanket just in case we need some extra warmth. And I have some hand warmers that we can throw in the sleeping bag, just in case we need to. I have my Sea to Summit pillow right there, very comfortable. And this is just a butt pad seat cushion. You can use it as an additional pillow. I like my head be elevated a little bit, so I'll inflate that a little bit more. Put it underneath, and then my head will be elevated. Nice comfortable. Let me give you a little uh, quick overview of the area. <clears throat> so we are right off the main trail. We're actually hidden pretty well off the main trail. This is an old dirt service road. <clears throat> like I said, about uh, 100, 200 yards back to the right here. And here's the main trail. So when we leave in the morning, there's our red and white marker. So we'll head back that way. So down there you can see the gate. Anyway. So there's a road over there. Hadn't heard any traffic on it. It's just a gravel road. It's mainly for service roads for the uh, the little gas wells, whatever you want to call it. All right, so if you're looking over here right now, you can't see my camp. You can kind of see the green guy line there, lime green. See my tent a little bit. So should start being able to see the tent here. You can definitely see the yellow part of it. So I got the rain fly open. 
but yeah we're kind of secluded we're kind of blended in here so hear a car now going on that road all right so we got a couple hours just to uh oh i don't know do a little bit of exploring maybe uh get in the tent maybe situate some stuff a little better but uh probably bring you back when it gets dark and we'll uh see if we can get a fire going we had a good little bit of rain while ago uh just enough to kind of get my boots dirty probably not even that, that bad so we're supposed to have more freezing rain throughout the night we'll see so if you can hear that it's raining is 420 and it's getting very dark out there because of the clouds and the rain so I had to come into the tent uh, I got my little camping chair sorry got my little camping chair in the vestibule there and my tripod so uh, I can cook in the vestibule later for my dinner with my little backpacking stove so shouldn't be an issue basically just take a couple minutes to boil some water pour it into our mountain house meal beef stew that's what we're having and then we have some sort of dessert we'll have to uh take a look at that and check it out so i'm just laying here i'm in my uh sleeping bag i don't even have i don't even have my jacket on it's very warm in here it's not it's not that cold out there it's maybe in the 30s but so far we're dry and that's a good thing comfortable so I like having a two-man tent. Uh, I got my backpack in here. Sit there. Basically, basically I have everything in the tent. So back to the sleeping bag. This retails for about $150. Teton Tracker, five degree. Uh, I got it on sale through Amazon. They have a red and gray and a green and gray. The red and gray was on sale for, I think 70. The green and gray for some reason was marked down to $35, so. I mean, $150 sleeping bag. I got for 35 bucks. I mean, you just have to shop around. Uh, the Sea to Summit pillow retails for 60. I got it when, uh, oh, that outdoor store went out of business, uh, Gander Mountain. I got this for, I think $17 in the clearance rack there. Uh, the Climate sleeping pad i got off uh, i believe steep and cheap it retails for around 150 uh, i think i paid right at 60 dollars for it <clears throat> this tent the jack wolf skin chinook 2 uh retails for right under 300 and I got it off of steep and cheap for 89 bucks. So, I mean, you know, if you add all this up, you know, it probably, 
totals up to what this tent should cost normally. And for about that same price, I got all the gear, you know, so. This, uh, this is a down blanket. You can get them at Sam's around Christmas time. They're 20 bucks. Otherwise, I think they're $40. You try to find them online. But they pack down. This will compress down even further. So you stuff it in your backpack real easy. Adds a lot of extra warmth. A lot of extra warmth. So. All right, well, I'm going to sign off with this battery charge. About 6 o'clock. Come back, see what's going on. It is 4.30, we're still in the tent. Still getting some rain. I heard a few freezing rain. It sounds a lot different when it hits the tent in regular rain. Sounds like it's back to regular rain. So we're getting real close to having freezing rain right now. So I am just enjoying being inside my tent. Very warm, very comfortable. Just listening to the rain. So I thought we had some freezing rain hitting the tent there, so I brought it back, brought you back. That sound like it's back to regular rain, so we'll shine back off for now. Well, it's 5:30 still raining it's getting a lot colder it's uh rain droplets are pretty much freezing to the tent now so we're cooking in the vestibule here boiling some water for our uh mountain house beef stew See my breath. <laughs> so we're just getting ready for to dinner. And don't look like we're gonna have a campfire, so Pretty much steadily been raining. So I think we're gonna be in the tent the rest of the evening until tomorrow when we uh, decide to get up and leave. <clears throat> Not a whole lot of interesting things going on so far. Just uh, cold, getting colder. Uh, my little, so it's reading 45.1 that's temperature inside the tent so it's I'm sure it's uh, 30 outside but I'm not sure how accurate that is it seems to be more accurate when it's warmer but <clears throat> got my down blanket on me Nice and warm. Very comfortable in here inside of my Jack Wolf skin tent. So we do have a dessert back backpackers pantry. Uh, forgot the name of it. Whether we cook it or not, I'm not sure. Let's see what it is. Mocha mousse pie. So basically just add cold water, stir it up really good. So it has a chocolate pudding, a hint of coffee and graham cracker toppings. Just add cold water. That'll be a nice dessert while I watch my movie later. But for now, we're gonna have some beef stew. Yeah. 
so that's not getting too hot at all but the heat is coming inside here so that might be why my little temperature thing is reading 45 so I did fall asleep a little bit earlier the pitter patter of the rain on the tent it's very cozy Then my stomach started growling, so dinner time. <laughs> so it's 5:44. Waiting for our mountain house meal to uh, rehydrate. Got about five more minutes, <clears throat> so the rain has stopped temporarily. I think we got more on the way. So I kind of see the, I had a uh, visit from a Sasquatch earlier and he basically stole my clothes and he left me my long underwear here. So, and my boots. I'm just kidding, just kidding. <sighs> I'm in my sleeping long underwear. <laughs> had to come out and pee. So just taking a look around. A little stack of firewood I had under the tree here. It's pretty much wet. We're going to get more rain, so I think a campfire is out. Well, it is cold out here. I'm going to get inside and uh, enjoy my nice warm beef stew. Burr. Five fifty, and we are eating our beef stew mountain house so freeze dried peas carrots cubed potatoes and some beef there it is very good, very good. Very tasty. Mountain House has some good, good food. Hmm. Well, I tell you, lightweight, compact, small as it is, it's a two and a half serving. So, you know, it's perfect for me for dinner. <clears throat> All I had to do is just boil some water and just pour it in there, stir it, wait four minutes, stir it again, and then wait another four minutes, stir it real good, and it's ready to eat right out of the bag. So they're real quick and easy, and you have a nice, tasty meal. Can't beat that for uh, about seven bucks. There's the rain again. A song popped in my head by the Eurythmics. Here comes the rain again. <laughs> Bouncing off my tent, but I don't care. I guess how the words go. So, what I'm using for a tent light tonight, before I let you go, is the Sun Jack Mini. So it has a low setting, medium, and high. I want to say it's close to 600 lumens on the high. Then you have, it's supposed to be SOS. And then we have red. So you can get that submarine fill if you want. The little blue indicator light that blinks. Basically, that tells you how much charge is left on the battery. This is a, it doesn't take batteries. It has a built-in battery that you charge. And also, you can, if I can unscrew it with one hand here, 
has a USB port so you can charge battery phone whatever and this is waterproof up to I don't know how many feet can't remember but so you can get that on Amazon for I want to say it was $30 uh, that's the mini they also have it in a large it's about 12 inches long and for about 10 more bucks but this battery I haven't run it down excuse me I haven't run it down all the way yet I've used it on several camping trips and that little blue light indicator if it blinks four times I mean it's still full of charged I've got it down to two blinks before and that was several camping trips using that light I mean a couple hours each evening you know so it holds quite a bit of charge it's a, and it's small it's lightweight uh, it's pretty pretty nice little uh, flashlight to add into your your setup so it's a Sun Jack get it off of Amazon some of you may be wondering am I packing as in a gun or a nug however you want to say it nug is just gun backwards so no I do not pack a gun uh, I do carry a knife this is Milwaukee brand get the light on here this is Milwaukee brand you can get it at the Home Depot and the tool department. Nice hard plastic sheath with a belt clip. So you have a two bladed knife, a serrated side and your traditional side. This thing is razor sharp, super, super sharp. And it comes super sharp already. And it's about $30 at Home Depot. Not bad. So, has a good little bit of weight to it in the handle. But overall, it's not super heavy. Right. That's what I carry. Out backpacking, camping. So. <clears throat> if I was carrying a gun, it really wouldn't be for animals. It would be for... Ow. Weirdos, I guess. <laughs> of course, I don't know how many weirdos are going to be out here besides me. I'm the only weirdo out here. Does that make me weird? Backpacking out here in the bush. Four miles away from my truck. Overnight. In the freezing rain. Nah. Just makes me adventurous. Mm. Good stuff. Alright, I'm going to finish up. I'm going to sign off for now. On here. <clears throat> it is 6.33 and it's pretty dark outside. I am enjoying my backpacker's pantry mocha mousse pie. Very good. So basically it's chocolate pudding, a hint of uh, coffee, and graham crackers. Mm, good stuff. nine o'clock at night and we're outside using the restroom real quick very cold very quiet there's the tent so I don't know if you can see kind of a light drizzle snow that on video or not. Uh, 
we're gonna get back into the tent, settle in for the night, get warm. All right, we are back in the tent from using the restroom. We are uh, ready for bed. It is cold out there. Uh, so I went ahead and got my hand warmers. I've got one in each sock. I've got two more that I'm going to keep up towards my torso and my hands maybe. I do have my little gloves, cotton gloves. Sock hat, ski mask, got a little collar. So that should help keep us warm. And we're gonna get bundled up in our sleeping bag here. Got our down blanket out and ready. So we should be plenty warm. Uh, there's a lot of moisture, rain on the, on the tent fly out there. Uh, starting to freeze pretty good so there's moisture in the air it's real light just like crystals just barely fluttering falling down they're so small and light but uh, it's moisture nonetheless and it is freezing so could have some uh, slippery roads in the morning but we shall see so, 13 minutes after 9 o'clock. <clears throat> I'm going to sign out for now. Anything, if anything interesting happens tonight, I'll bring you back. Should be an uneventful night. Just uh, going to stay warm. We'll see you all in the morning. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, currently, it is, I think, 24 degrees outside. The wind chill factor, it feels like 16. There's about seven mile an hour winds, seven to 10 mile an hour winds, not too bad. Windy wise, <clears throat> it's pretty cold out there. It's about 7.30 a.m. Uh, stayed warm all night. Very warm, very comfortable. Uh, I did have to get up two times last night and once early this morning to use the restroom. Very cold out there. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> The uh, rain on the tent fly is frozen. Uh, I'm just kind of laying here, letting the sun thaw it out. Looks like it's starting to thaw a little bit. <clears throat> see if we can get that on there. <clears throat> see the rain droplets out there on the rain fly there. Those are frozen currently. So the sun's coming up there. Hopefully it's gonna start thawing that out a little bit. I'll we'll have to pack everything up wet, but uh, we'll unpack it all when we get home and dry everything out. I got my uh, down blanket over top of me. I put it kind of over my head when I sleep. Uh, keeps me a little warmer. And then uh, still get plenty of air. So we're just going to get comfortable here and lay here for a little bit. Then uh, hopefully let that ice thaw out. Yeah, good morning again. Uh, right about nine o'clock 
I was trying to get the sun to dry off the ice or melt the ice off the tent but a little too cold still so I think we're just gonna eat our breakfast we're gonna have uh, that's what we're having so spicy southwest breakfast hash Potatoes, shredded beef, green chilies, black beans, and corn. Very good. I had this on uh, <clears throat> on another adventure I did. I had this for breakfast. Very good. Well, camp is down. And it's time to head out. So, that's where the tent was. See the little dry spot. Not real wet out here. Just a little dusting of ice, I guess. Never got to do a fire. That's all right. We'll use it next time. There's the pack. All packed and ready to go. All right, let's get on the trail and get on out of here. Made it to the end of the trail. Got some ducks. Windmill, stock tank. Big Lee has started. Big Lee, I don't know. Big Rig, Colonel Lee, Big Rig. Still haven't figured out a name for that thing. Big, beautiful truck. So, we did about a four mile hike out into the wilderness, forest, bush, whatever you want to call it. So, four miles back, we did about an eight mile, roughly eight miles. It got down into the teens. We had some freezing rain, but there's no sign of any rain right now. So let's get up into the 50s today. Well, I hope you enjoyed our trip. Do me a favor, like and subscribe. If you liked what you saw, trust me, there's gonna be more, more to come. Especially this summer, we're headed up to Colorado. A lot more adventures to come. Get out there, have fun.